Hey everyone, Vincent here from CreativeDegev.net. In today's video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create these nice, awesome looking flames within After Effects. And the great part about this technique is, we're not going to be using any third party plugins. We're going to be strictly using the built in tools within After Effects. So, no trap code particular, no trap code form. This is all built within 100% of After Effects. And before we get started, I just want to say that this technique is primarily aimed towards a motion graphic standpoint. We're not really trying to make 100% realistic flames. If you want to make 100% realistic flames, then I suggest you use actual live footage or go to a plugin called Theme Effects from a 3D application like 3ds Max. So let's just take a look at what we have here. So the flames look pretty okay. They look pretty realistic, semi-realistic, semi-motion graphic looking. And we have some nice little animation going on. And of course, you can always tweak these settings as we go along. But let's just hop into After Effects here and just take a look at how we create this in After Effects using the built-in tools. So let's go ahead and create a new composition right here. We're going to name this flame element. And I'm just going to make it 27, uh, 1280 by 720 and 10 seconds long and hit OK. So we have a blank composition in here. We're going to go ahead and create a new solid for our background. So Control Command Y and just name this background. Make a comp size, hit OK. And now we're going to make another new solid, so Control or Command Y, and name this flame, and hit OK. So now we're going to start building our flame element here in After Effects. Let's go into the effects and presets and search in Fractal Noise. Now the Fractal Noise is a very versatile and very powerful plugin. I believe it's one of the most powerful plugins that comes within After Effects. And Andrew Kramer says it, Harry Frank says it, I also believe it. The Fractal Noise has so much potential for a whole bunch of things. You can create some smoke, flames, you can create skies, clouds, you can create so many things using the Fractal Noise. You can texture things with the Fractal Noise, you can create some abstract shapes with the Fractal Noise. It's just so powerful and versatile, you just need to know how to use it. Let's go ahead and create our flames now. So this is the Fractal Noise doesn't really look like flames right now. So I'm going down to the brightness and I'm just going to lower the brightness down. Maybe around negative 52 or so, just so we get basic elements like this. Maybe even more. Maybe around there. So nothing, nothing's really happening. And then I'm going to go to the fractal type up here and I'm going to change it to dynamic twist. I think it looks somewhat like flames and now you start to see that we kind of have these kind of flame looking elements right here let's get down to the transform and i'm going to uncheck the uniform scaling and i'm just going to pull up the width so we want the width to be kind of wide kind of large depending on your flames something like this and then we're going to compensate that by increasing the scale height so just make the height somewhat uh, a little bit smaller than the width so we kind of have this kind of flame looking element here. It's starting to look pretty good now. We're going to crank up the complexity to about 6.2 so we have a little bit more detail in our flames. And that's looking pretty good. Now let's start animating this first before we start colorizing it and tweaking it and enhancing it. So I'm going to go ahead and click Alt or Option, hold Alt or Option and click on the evolution stopwatch. And let's have in a quick expression, time asterisk uh, 110. And just click away and what it's going to do it's going to times the time by 110 so we just have some basic evolution going on here the flames are just kind of animating through and just changing and evolving over time and that's what we want now we're going to go ahead and animate this even more so let's go down to the offset turbulence right here go to the beginning of your timeline and hit a stopwatch so we pretty much set a keyframe for the beginning i'm just going to make some room here Close it, hit U on the keyboard to reveal all keyframes. So we have our first keyframe for the offset turbulence. Nothing's really changed. We're going to just lower it down. So we're just going to decrease it in the Y. So just bring it kind of down. And you'll see Y in a second. Move it down. And then we're going to go to the end of our timeline. And we're just going to hold Shift on the keyboard and just drag the X axis. We really want to make this flame move. Because flames in real life actually move pretty fast if you think about it. So we kind of want our flames to be moving pretty fast. So already you start to see our flames kind of animating to the right. But I kind of want I kind of want to make my flames emit from the bottom and kind of flow upwards. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of the timeline again and just make sure that this is really uh, pulled down a little bit. So not only is it going to animate from left to right, it's also going to move and animate from bottom to top. 
Let's go to the very end of the timeline here and just raise it up a little bit. So we kind of have some left to right movement and some down to up movement. So it kind of flows up. Let's see what we have here. This is, let's just do a, do a RAM preview. And already you can see that we kind of have our flame movement. We have some nice flame movement to the to the right and kind of flowing upwards. And the hard part about the flames is not actually creating the flames. It's actually to get the simulation uh, as realistic as possible. So we need to make this a little bit faster. Let's hold shift down and just go ahead and crank up the X. So we really have our flames moving. So that's looking pretty good. Of course, you can go back and tweak it a little bit more if you wanted to. You can play around with the contrast. I'm going to set mine to 90. And now let's go ahead and start colorizing this thing to make it look more like flames rather than little wisps of smoke. So of course you can tint it, you can use the curves adjustment, you can use human saturation, you can tritone it. But the best way to do that is to use a color correction effect called Colorama. Now you don't usually use this effect a lot, probably not. But it actually gives you full control over the whole color spectrum of our flame element right here. So let's go down to the output cycle. And by default, the colors are kind of ugly. So we're going to use a preset, find the user preset palette right here and choose the, the, on the very bottom, it's a fire preset. And by default, again, it looks kind of, looks kind of like blood. So we need to adjust this little spectrum right here. So go ahead and pull out some of the random nodes out here. We don't need that many nodes. We just pull out some of the redundant ones, pull out all the extra ones that we don't really need. So we're just stuck with some of the basic colors of a flame. And then we're just going to squish everything to the top right. So move this node up here and pretty much shift all the nodes all the way up. And you can see what it kind of does to our flame right here. Let's drag it up. We can remove this node. And to remove a node, you simply just click on it and just drag out and it should delete it. So move everything up. I mean to compress it a little bit more. And now you're starting to see the color variation and see the nice variations of red we start having right here. And it's all a matter of fine tuning. If you want your flames to be more red, then you just need to tweak it to make it red. I like mine pretty nice and orange and kind of hot and glowy. So now they start to look more like flames now. And if it's too small for you, you, you can always go back to the transform of the fractal noise and just crank it up even more. So you start to have more realistic, larger flames. Let's go ahead and add a turbulence displacement to this. Everything looks kind of linear, looks nice and smooth. We want some variation to this, so we're gonna drag a turbulent displace. And it's pretty much going to add some variation displacement to our flames, as you see here. It looks kind of weird, but we're going to tweak it a little bit. So the amount, we're going to crank it way down. We're going to crank it to about 10. We don't want that much displacement going on. And then the size, we'll set it to 150. We want some pretty large displacement. We don't want some small little itsy bitsy uh, displacement going on. And then again, we're going to Alt or Option click on the Evolution Stopwatch for the Turbulent Displacement. We're gonna type in time times 20. And that's gonna just dis involve the displacement, turbulent displacement by a little bit. So we have some more movement going on. And then to top this off, we're gonna apply a nice little glow. Drag it in, apply it to our flame element. And just go ahead and tweak the threshold until you get something that looks pretty nice. And play around with the radius. Let's go ahead and lower down the intensity. It's a little bit too intense. You know, something like that. It looks pretty good. It looks semi-realistic. You can use it for uh, motion graphics stuff like titles, animations, intros. It looks pretty good, especially if you want to make it for like a cartoon or something. And I wouldn't be surprised with a little bit of tweaking and stuff. You can kind of pull it off as a realistic flame. You just need to do a little more advanced color correction and maybe some more effects applied to it. But... Overall, it looks pretty good. It looks semi-realistic again. You can add your text back here. Again, if you want to change some of the parameters, you can always go back to the transform and just scale it up or scale it down. If you want some sparks, you can use CC Particle World or Particular. 
So we have this nice flames. If you want more flames, you can always um, increase the brightness. You see what that does here. It gives more, it re reveals more of the fractal noise. So we have some more larger flames. As you see here. The really cool thing about this effect is it's all built in After Effects, so we can always go back and customize it and tweak it and apply more effects to it. So don't forget to experiment. This is all just, these values are just for demonstration purposes, so I get the point across. But of course, you guys need to go back and tweak some of the settings and parameters to make it look a little more realistic. Of course, if you want to add some heat waves to this, some heat displacement waves to it, I have a tutorial on that at creativedejo.net, so check it out. And you can add some smoke to this, some sparks, using a particular and trap good form. But essentially, this is how you create some pretty cool, neat fires in After Effects without any third-party plugins. So pretty, pretty unique. I encourage you guys to all go back and experiment with After Effects and try to build some cool things without using any of the trap code plugins or any third-party plugins. Just try to create something cool by using only After Effects built-in tools. So I'm Vincent Wynn from Creative Dojo. If you want more tutorials, check out creativedojo.net. Also, for everyone following me on Twitter or Facebook, you guys know that every single tutorial, I always show a preview image or a preview video of what I'm going to create. So if you want a heads up or an early sneak peek on upcoming tutorials, uh, don't forget to check out Creative Dojo because I post all the uh, posts and previews on Creative Dojo before the tutorial comes out. So just check it out. You can read more about it. Read about what I did before the tutorial comes out. So check it out, creativedojo.net. I'm Vincent Wynn. I'll see you guys next time in a later tutorial. Don't forget to leave your comments down below and I'll read them. And thanks for watching, guys.